Good morning, free thinkers, free thinking men. Here's something for you today. We're going to talk about going from dating to a long-term relationship. How do you do that? How do you navigate those waters? You're going to find out. But first, a pipe. Ah, nice. Savinelli 673 that I call the Sultanelli. And believe it or not, I have a jar of... Hold on one second. Where did I put it? Frog Morton on the town from July of 2014. So that's been sitting around quite a while. And it tastes and smells just as beautiful as it did back in 2014, believe it or not. It's magnificent. It aged really well. Really, really well. So let me get a couple more puffs. I met Rich back in 2017. We were both speaking at a men's event. In 2018, I had him out in a backyard smoking a pipe. The story goes like this. I offered to do a pipe smoking class. And I had gotten a bunch of pipes and tobacco from a company at a very reasonable rate. And I was going to have a pipe smoking class on a Saturday night. The reality was, or was it a Sunday night? I forget. The reality was, I, I, I thought I was going to have five or six people. I thought it was going to be like an intimate pipe smoking session. You know, picnic table, some lawn chairs, that kind of thing. What did it end up being? Minimum 50, I was saying maybe 60, I estimated, but minimum 50 guys. How do I know that? Because I think I had, at the time, I think I had 110 pipes, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember counting what was left and then giving the rest of the way, giving the rest away the next day. I'm just going to read some things from the book and then talk about them. The book is called The Unplugged Alpha. You can get it on Amazon. It's a good book. I don't care if you like Richard or not. Get the book. Period. Get the book. This is the kind of book I will buy for my boys. And I'm not kidding you. My boys get this book. A monogamous long-term relationship, otherwise known as an LTR. You should only consider a conventional relationship with a woman after you've spun enough plates and the cream has risen to the top. So you've dated enough woman, women, and you see the ones that have the nice personalities. All women have the same nature. Not every woman has the same personality. Get that through your head. Okay? You eliminate women based upon their personalities not because of their nature. If you eliminated a woman based upon female nature, you'd never have a woman in your life. I'm probably the only one that teaches that. So, the personality that you get along well with. She must also exhibit none of the warning signs described in the 20 red flags chapter. Or if she does, then she is proactively working on fixing that area of her life herself. Okay, there are red flags. In my life, when I look at my failed relationships, my failed dating relationships, including my marriage, I will tell you this, it was because I ignored red flags. You've never written down and inventoried the red flags while you were dating, did you? Most of the trouble you got into, you got into because you ignored red flags if you're honest with yourself. Most guys that go through the quote-unquote anger phase 
they're mad at women, are really mad at themselves for ignoring red flags. And I'm not letting women off the hook either. Women can do some pretty shitty things to guys. Women don't like to admit it, but they are natural plate spinners because of their hypergamous nature. I agree with that. The Superman cartoon. Superman is in bed. There's the woman sitting on the side of the bed, getting dressed. And the caption says, Is he really the best I can do while Superman is in bed sleeping? Do I think women think that way? Yeah. Do I think men think that way? Yeah, I do. I think we are all hypergamous. Some people would, what's the other word? Hypotenus. There's another word. I don't blame a woman for being hypergamous because I don't blame her for wanting the best for her and her offspring. How can you blame her? Right? Reminds me of Tina Turner's song, What's Love Got to Do With It? Love is the last reason you want to get married. The last reason. Love is an emotion, and emotions change. You better have some more reasons other than love if you choose to get married. They are always asking themselves, is this the best I can do? If you are dating a woman, then assume that she is seeing other men until she initiates the where-do-we-stand talk and wants to open dialogue about a deeper commitment. Women, not men, should start the talk about long-term relationships. Guys, have you made that mistake before? You know, if you meet somebody online, you're not the only one. There's minimum six to ten other men she's communicating with. When do you have the talk that you be exclusive. When does that happen? I don't have the answer for that for you. That's not the topic for tonight. But when do you have the answer? She might not be having sex with all of those guys, but she's kissing all of those guys. And some of those guys, she's telling, I don't kiss on a first date or a second date or the third date. She's telling them, mm, I'm just not feeling it. You're a nice guy, but I'm not feeling it. Now, She's going through her own process of elimination. By the time you had sex or kissed the woman, whether it be quickly, over a medium amount of time or a long period of time, she has been kissing a lot of men. She is having sex with a lot of men. Your romantic fairy tale brain tells you she can't be because she seems to be available every time I ask her out. Okay. That's another lie that men tell themselves. Have the talk. Well, first of all, let me put it this way. Do you really want to be planting seeds in a field that other farmers are planting seeds in? That's a question that's not in this book, but it's a question you should ask yourself. Never, ever initiate a where-do-we-stand talk. It's weak and signals scarcity in your life. Let her bring it up. Remember, women are the gatekeepers to sex, while men are the gatekeepers to relationships. Women trade sex. Let me just put that in my words now. Women trade sex for relationships. Men trade relationships for sex. Which means women get to decide when you will have sex with her. You get to decide if you want to become more serious with her or whether it's an exclusive deal or not. You heard of the phrase, your grandma told you, don't put all your eggs in one basket. One of the reasons why you get hurt is because of your lack of options, man. Women can always find a guy. Okay, A woman will break up with you. You will break up with her. She can have a boyfriend the next day. That's thanking the Lord, praising the Lord for her. That can't happen as easy for men. That's just the way things are. There's thirsty men everywhere. They're rich. They're poor. They drive nice cars. They have great jobs. Take my word for it. I know as a man who coaches men, there are many men who make that mistake. 
and I'm not pointing the finger. It's happened to most of us, including myself, at one time in my life. You should only consider a long-term relationship after about six months of plate spinning. If she demands an LTR after only a month, move on and let her go. I've always said this too. Whoever, if the guy says, I love you first, he already lost. Already. Fact. Remember, men are the gatekeepers to relationships. Women are the gatekeepers to sex. So act like it. You, as the man, get to decide when a woman gets your exclusive sexual and non-sexual attention. You decide. Have power over yourself sexually. You're not a dog just humping every knee of every person at the party. Or are you? If you do this and you get into a monogamous LTR, you end up abandoning your male sexual strategy of unlimited access to unlimited women. I don't like the way that's phrased. I'm not crazy about the way that's phrased. Unlimited access to unlimited women. I don't think every man wants that. Honestly, I think some men want one woman and are happy with that. They don't want to spin plates. But their problem is, is that they are dating a woman and they're putting all their chips on one hand of cards when they need to have other plates or other people, other women. I don't care if they're friends or other activities. I told you, if a woman flakes out on you, your response should be, oh good, I get to spend the night by myself, get a good night's sleep, read a good book, and have a productive day tomorrow. Rather than panicking and trying to fill that spot on a Friday night. You should also note that if you choose to abandon your sexual strategy, that's an assumption she must also abandon her sexual strategy of open hypergamy. That means no male friends, no more seeking attention on social media with provocative pictures and posts. Oh, and no overnight girls trips to places where she can proclaim to her friends, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I'm not a big fan of separate vacations at all. I'm not a fan of, well, I've been doing this for years. These are the friends that I've hung out with for years. We did this every year for the past 10 years. Maybe you're not strong enough of a man to keep her from doing that. And I'm not saying forcibly keep her, but if she goes, you're out of there. Period. She can find another boyfriend. Easily. You need to have a pair big enough to be able to say goodbye to a woman that you are attracted to. You hear me? I hope you do. No male friends. Some other conditions that should exist for an LTR to work well for you, you should be one to two points higher than her on the sexual market value scale. That's a relative thing. So she feels that she's optimizing her hypergamy. Remember, a woman can only be content if she feels like her man is of higher value than her. I get that. I understand that. Your frame must be the dominant frame of the relationship, meaning that she is a complement to your life and not the focus. You have a mission in life. She is not your mission. She joins your mission, but she is not the mission. A woman that's fully in your frame will defer to you in major choices. Where you spend your holidays, where you go on vacations, she defers to you. If you're a prick about it, it's going to be all about you, you, you all the time. There are times when you have to give, and you will have to go and spend time with her family in York, Pennsylvania, in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, the family that buys dented cans and the mom smokes a corncob pipe. You know what I'm talking about. And the gay brother that lives in the basement. Does some of the, sometimes you just have to smile and nod. you got to remember, you're having a relationship with a woman, not her family. Now, marrying her is different than dating her. Keep that in mind as well. A 
woman that's fully in your frame will defer to your major choices. Because if you are a few points higher than her on the sexual market scale, she respects your opinion more. Remember, women want to be loved, men want to be respected. You, you are going to get shit tested several times a day and a week by a woman. It's going to happen. If you have any questions, write me. But here's something that you can also do. And women shit test men vet. This is one thing that you want to do. You want to make sure, you want to make sure that she respects you. I would rather hear a woman tell me she respects me than anything else. Sure, I like hearing I love you, but respect is something you say and do. If a woman does not honor your wishes for fidelity, for no girls night out, for not going on vacations, for not unloading male friends, when a woman starts saying, I got these male friends or this male friend, Instantly, boom, red flag should pop up. That means it's a guy that wanted to or already did poker. That's the reality. Very few, very few women have friends that they haven't kissed, hugged, spent the night in bed with, clothed or naked, slept on the floor, watching TV, kissed, hugged. Maybe it just didn't work out, but I like him enough. He's not dangerous enough for me to be a, what's the word, like a boyfriend because women want a little danger. They like hang out with like the safe boys. Reminds me of these guys that have a lot of female friends. Same thing. They're, they think they're going to friend their way into a relationship. Ain't going to happen. She must understand through your covert actions and words that everyone is replaceable, including her. There is no one. You, on the other hand, must understand that you will never own her. It's just your turn. She's not yours. It's just your turn. That became one of the phrases that I hated when I first heard that many years ago. But a lot of times we hate the things that are true, right? That's why I said in my recent video, have a loose grip on everything and everyone. She might be in your life for a year, or she might be with you until death do us part. But it's just your turn. Just your turn. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest level of interest, her level of interest in you must be an obvious 9, preferably a 10. Women with an interest level lower than that will be an exceptional amount of work, and the chances of her love wandering will be quite high. She needs to be head over heels about you. And maintain that. The minute that you feel that love, commitment, and respect going down, then you need to have the talk. It's not the talk about you better get your crap together. It's the talk. I don't think we're going to be made. I don't think we're made for each other. This is not a good match. I'm not happy. You're not going to be happy with me. And I just think we should part right now. That's the talk you got to have. Also, never live with an LTR, long-term relationship, as doing so causes her competition, anxiety to relax, making it tougher for you to manage the frame of the relationship. The only exception to this is if you are planning on getting married and having children, and you need to vet her as a wife by living together first. <clears throat> if you're going to be married, it's a different story, I think. If you are just moving in with her because you're a horny boy and you're lonely, that's a bad move. That's a temporary relationship. It's got an expiration date on it. Shame on you for moving a chick in if you're not marrying her. And shame on you for marrying a woman who guilts you into saying, hey, look, we moved in together two years ago. This thing really should be leading to marriage. No, it shouldn't. Marriage, the idea of marriage comes from you, sir, not her. You are choosing her. She is not choosing you. Let's get that straight.
The highest value males will be in an open long-term relationship on their end, but she can't do the same. More feminized men gawk at this statement and protest, Cooper says, but throughout history, truly high value men had a harem of women that were sexually exclusive with him. And of course, then he gets into the the concept of polyamory, which I think is absolute nonsense. That's having uh, multiple lovers, both people having multiple lovers and giving each other the blessing of multiple lovers. I think that would be kind of weird. You know, you're getting ready for bed. You're going to bed at 11 o'clock. You're getting ready to turn out the light on the nightstand and pull up the covers and she rolls in and you know, she just got railed by somebody for the past two hours or was bobbing up and down like a damn fishing bobber. That would be kind of rough to kiss her goodnight at that point. So the whole polyamory thing, what part of your friggin' brain do you have to suspend and turn off to think that polyamory is normal? If you're both dating around, living apart, that could be a possibility. No one calls that polyamory. They just call it, I'm dating around. But if you're living with someone and you have a polyamorous relationship, you know damn well you hate it every time she walks in the door or if she's five minutes late. doesn't matter how open you are as a man, how liberal you are, how sexually independent you are and a free thinker. It's going to bother you that someone else is railing your woman. if you're normal. Let's go over the cold hard truth of the chapter. Never forget women may be the gatekeeper of who they have sex with, but you are the gatekeeper of who you have a relationship with. And as a man of increasingly high value, the strongest and most valuable bargaining chip of the two. That is correct. You lead the relationship. You heard me say probably three or four years ago. You vet her for her reaction to the phrase, follow my lead. Follow my lead. If she's like, get the hell out of here. Forget that. I'm doing my own thing. The proper mindset is next. When a woman has genuine desire for you and appreciates your value, then she will have no problems sharing you with other women as you are satisfying her hypergamous nature. Some people say women want men that are wanted by other women and that men want to be like. I get that. Women like men that other women are attracted to, obviously attracted to. Do they like women that men, do they like men that are having sex with other women? Maybe some are, maybe some. I think that might be the exception rather than the rule in my 61 years of experience. Track the menstrual cycle. Of course, they're talking about younger women. If you're my age, there's no menstrual cycles. Track the menstrual cycle of any potential LTRs. Watch how differently they behave when they are ovulating versus when they are menstruating. It's so important to know when your woman's day is. When she first gets her period, mark it on your calendar and count 28 days. And then just, you're going to notice different things. You're going to find her to be sexier. You're going to find her breasts to be plumper. Her curves will just be radiating. She will have more of an hourglass figure for that week, week and a half, than for any other time in the month. And she'll be very sexually attracted to you. And you will be very sexually attracted to her. But watch the behavior. It will change. It will change. Don't react to it. Just take note of it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Always believe a woman's actions over her words. I've told you this for what? 20 years. Believe what she does, not what she says. That actually works well with men too. When I've applied that to men, I do better with even just like male friends and people at work. I don't believe... When you get to be my age, you don't believe anything anybody says, let alone a woman. 
Nothing. Actions always speak louder than words with human beings. So this is not exclusive to women. Her actions will tell you what her true priority is and tells you the truth about how she truly feels. Do not be afraid to unload a woman. Do not be afraid to unload a woman who you have doubts about. If she's got to work hard at trying to calm your doubts, she's trying to cover up a crime. It's Don't be gaslighted into thinking that your suspicions are off. Women who are interested in you don't have girls' nights out. They don't have girls' vacations. They don't go to Vegas. Women talk completely different to their girlfriends than they do to you. That is a fact. How do I know? I've known many, and I've heard many stories in my car, in a bedroom, about boyfriends and ex-husbands and ex-husbands-to-be Believe me, they're not the angels you think they are. And I don't care if it's an Amish woman. I don't care. I don't care. Remember, female nature doesn't change, but the personality changes. Okay, The personality is something that you may like or not like, but the nature, is it just is. You might not like that cats meow, dogs bark, birds fly, and fish swim, but they do. Accept the world as it is, not how you want it to be. I wish fish could fly, but they don't. I wish cats could bark, but they don't. So I appreciate them for who they are. There's something about women that keeps us men on our toes. Your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to have a pair big enough to be able to deal with it. Now, the bullcrap you don't have to deal with. That's when you hit the next button. But the reality is, be man enough to know when to say when. I don't care who you are, sir. You are attractive to somebody. You are attractive to somebody. And I don't care how bald you are, how short you are, or how fat you are. And I've known a lot of short, bald, fat people who've had decent looking wives and decent marriages, okay? The reality is this. There's a little bug floating around in here. That's a reality. The reality is this. If you just make a little change in yourself every day, every single day, just something in the direction, move the ball down the field, do something in the direction of improvement, you're going to be attracting something different than you ever did before. Listen to me, sir, when I talk to you. You can do this. You can do this. You get into problems when you get desperate or when you get bitter. Two things, two traps you don't want to fall into. And YouTube is filled with bitter men and desperate men. You don't want to be either. And women can sniff that. They're bitterness detectors. They're desperation detectors. Who was it uh, that talked about desperation cologne. They Men spray desperation cologne on themselves. I thought that was funny. And lastly, Cooper says, as noted by my good friend Dr. Sean T. Smith in his book, The Tactical Guide to Women, spend as much time as possible vetting and setting healthy boundaries with a woman before committing. It's from a month, uh, from month 18 onwards when a woman's true personality comes through. I think the true personality comes through I said six months to two years, so I do like that 18-month thing. Some women will... I, I will never forget this. One woman, after about a month or two, said to me, I love you so much. I would, I would live with you in a cardboard box. Have you ever heard that one before? I would live with you in a dumpster. Okay. I was also on my way to hustling my way, sharing my dreams about making that first million back in a certain year. Literally, literally, the exact words of the woman were, well, Papa better make that million because Mama 
wants a walk-in closet the size of an airplane hangar. That was after six months. It reared its ugly head within six months. 18 months? Are you kidding me? Give it six months. The red flags show up. Crazy might not show up for a couple years. But the red flags show up pretty quick. You've got this. You really do. 2022 is the year you get unstuck. You don't have to be stuck anymore when it comes to life, love, business, or career. Thanks for watching. Now you know why I stir my coffee with chopsticks. Mm -hmm.